Hey you, no talking in private. I'm discussing something serious here. Not pleased that we were whispering among ourselves, Haruhi's eyes became triangular shaped as she glared and shouted at us. So, we had to obediently receive our tanzaku and pencils from Haruhi and return to our seats. Haruhi hummed and began writing. Nagato sat still and stared at the tanzaku, while Azahina-san had the troubled expression of encountering something harder than a difficult math problem. Koizumi said in a relaxed manner, Hmm, now that's a bother. He tilted his head in deep thought. Do you three really have to take this crap so seriously? Wouldn't it be better to just take it easy and write whatever you like? I'm really hoping whatever Haruhi writes doesn't come true. I spun the pencil around in my fingers and looked around. The bamboo shoot that Haruhi stole was lying out the open window. Its leaves looked messed up as a result. The occasional breeze made a ruffling noise among the leaves, making one feel cool and relaxed. Hey, are you guys done yet? Haruhi's voice brought me back to reality. On the table in front of her were two notes that read, Let the world revolve around me, and I wish the earth would rotate backwards. It was full of stuff a spoiled, mischievous kid would write. It would have been fine if it were meant as a joke, yet Haruhi looked dead serious when she hung her tanzaku on the bamboo. Asahina-san wrote in her cute, tidy handwriting, I wish my sewing would improve, and I wish my cooking would improve. Ah, <sighs> so cute. She put her hands together and prayed at the tanzaku she hung. I think she might have gotten something wrong there. There was nothing interesting on Nagata's tanzaku. Writing in a very regular font, she wrote abstract words such as harmonize and reorganize. Koizumi was no different from Nagato. Writing in a scribbled handwriting, he wrote simple phrases like world peace and fraternal family. And what about me? Mine were simple as well. Since it's 25 and 16 years in the future, I would be an old geezer by then. So I guess the future me would appreciate the following. I want money and I want a house with a garden attached where I can give my dog a bath. Ugh, such boring wishes. You're the least qualified to say that. In the long term, my wishes are far healthier than wishing for the earth to rotate backwards. Forget it. Everybody, make sure you remember the wishes you've written down. The first key period would be 16 years from now. Let's have a race to see whose wish is granted first. Oh, of, of course. I looked as Azahina-san nodded her head with a serious expression as I sat down on a foldable chair. When I looked carefully, Nagato had already returned to the land of books. Haruhi stuck the long bamboo shoot out the window and then put it in a firm position. She then pulled a chair beside the window and sat on it. She placed her elbow on the windowsill and then looked up at the sky. The side of her face looked a bit melancholic, as though not knowing what to do next. She's the type of person whose mood swings very rapidly. She was yelling so excitedly a minute ago. I opened my textbook and began my attempt to tackle the exams all over again, as I tried to memorize the different types of adjectives. 16 years. That's a really long time. Nagato was silently reading her foreign novel. Koizumi began to play chess on his own while I was busy trying to memorize my English translations. All this time, Haruhi was sitting by the window and looking up at the sky. She was actually quite a beautiful view to behold if she wasn't moving. At first, I thought she had just taken a leaf out of Nagato's book, but somehow, the sight of Haruhi sitting there behaving herself just made me feel even more uneasy. I thought she was just sitting there thinking of new things to give us a major headache. Meanwhile, for some reason, Haruhi looked particularly depressed today. Sometimes she would look up into the sky and breathe a deep sigh. This made me shudder even more. The silence was probably the calm before the storm. It's just too terrifying. The Emperor Sutoku was like that for the first two or three days after being exiled to Sanuki. I heard the sound of paper rustling and lifted my head. Sitting across from me and working hard on her math problems, Asahina-san placed a finger on her lips and winked. She then gave me an extra tanzaku which she took in advance a while ago. Glancing at Haruhi, Asahina-san then retracted her hand and lowered her head with the face of a little girl who had just successfully pulled a prank. My urge to become an accomplice in crime has now fully awakened. I quickly pulled over the tanzaku Asahina-san gave me and read it carefully. The following message was written on the tanzaku in a small and round handwriting. Please stay in the club room after today's activities have ended. Mikuru-chan. Of course I would comply. That's it for today. 
Haruki quickly picked up her bag and left the room. She was acting weirdly today. She was like a diesel engine truck that had suddenly become as tame as a solar powered car. In other words, today was a pretty decent day. Then I shall excuse myself as well. Koizumi cleaned up his chessboard and stood up. After exchanging glances with me and Azahina-san, he too left the room. Nagato shut her thick book with a loud thud. Oh, you're leaving as well? Thanks for understanding. Just as I was feeling grateful to her, Nagato walked towards me as silently as a cat. She took out a piece of paper. It was another Tanzaku. I can't help you send it to space even if you do give it to me. Strange geometric shapes were drawn on it. What on earth is this? Some sort of Sumerian language? I'm afraid not even the Enigma machine would be able to decipher the meaning of this message. I frowned and studied the patterns, which were neither drawing nor words, with triangular, circular, and wave-like shapes all over. By now, Nagato had turned around to pack her bag and had already left the room. Forget it. I put the piece of Tanzaku in my jacket pocket, then turned to face Azahina-san. I'm sorry, could you come with me somewhere? Seeing as how the invitation came from Azahina-san herself, I'd be condemned by the heavens if I were to turn her down. I'd even jump down a molten iron pit if she commanded me to. Sure, where to? It's, um, about three years ago. I asked for a location and she answered with a time instead. But, not three years ago again. Yet, I was suddenly interested. After all, Azahina-san claims to be a time traveler from an unknown future. Though I keep forgetting about that since she's so cute. But, we're going to three years ago. Does that mean we have to travel through time? Yes. Um, sure, I'm more than happy to go, but why me? What are we going to do there? Well, I think you'll know when we get there. Huh? Maybe it was a confused look on my face, but Azahina frantically shook her hands and pleaded with tears in her eyes. I'm begging you, please just don't ask questions. Please just come with me or... Uh, it's gonna be a problem. Well, alright, let's go. Azahina-san joyously grabbed my hands. Oh, Azahina-san's happiness is my happiness. <laughs> but now that I think about it, when Azahina-san declared she was from the future, there was no one else to verify her claim. It wasn't until I encountered the grown-up Azahina-san that I truly believed her story. Yet I still can't deny having suspicions about some sort of conspiracy behind this. Then wouldn't this be a great chance to really prove that Azahina-san comes from the future? So, uh, where's the time machine? I imagined having to crawl into a cabinet, but Azahina-san said there was no such device. Then how are we going to commence time travel? Azahina-san squirmed and clutched her apron, then said, Huh? Here? I turned and looked nonchalantly around the club room, which, apart from us, was completely empty. Please sit down, and could you please close your eyes? That's right, relax your shoulders as well. I did as she told me to. I hope I don't get struck on the back of the head suddenly. Hyun-kun? Azahina-san's suppressed voice came in from behind my ear. Such a soft breath. I'm sorry. I had a bad feeling about this. As I was about to open my eyes, suddenly everything went dark around me. I was knocked unconscious as I felt a strong, nauseating feeling as though I was losing my balance. Before the darkness came, I thought to myself, I wouldn't have agreed to this if I had known. When I regained my senses, my vision was inverted by 90 degrees. Everything that was supposed to be standing was now lying flat. When I saw the street lamp sticking out from my left side to my right, I realized I was laying down. It was then that I felt a warm feeling by the left side of my head. Oh, you're awake! After I heard that angelic voice, I was fully awake. What was that squirming under my left ear? Um, if you don't lift your head... Azahina-san sounded troubled. I pulled myself upright and confirmed where I was. A bench in the park at night. What's going on here? I was sleeping on Azahina-san's knees. And because I was sleeping, I have absolutely no memory of it. Ah, oh, this sucks. My legs are getting numb already. Azahina-san smiled with embarrassment and lowered her head. I don't know where she went to get changed, but her maid costume was now replaced with her North High uniform. There was more than enough time for her to get changed while I was sleeping, but why was I sleeping? 
I can't let you know because that information is classified. Please don't be mad at me. <sighs> How could I be mad at you? If it were Haruhi, I'd already have beaten the crap out of her, but since it's you, I don't mind at all. Speaking of which, I was just closing my eyes and sitting on the chair in the club room a second ago. Why was I suddenly in the park in the middle of the night? And I feel like I've been to this park before. Ah, I remember. Nagato asked me to meet her here a while ago. Is this some kind of mecca for weirdos? I scratched my head. There was something I needed to ask. Um, what time plane is this? From our time of origin, it's now July 7, three years ago. It's about nine at night, I think. Really? Yes. She sounded really serious. I never thought we would be able to come here so easily. Of course, I wasn't naive enough to believe everything she told me. I would have to confirm it for myself first. I'll try calling the time and weather hotline. As I was about to tell Azehina-san what I planned to do, my left shoulder suddenly felt heavy. Huh? An exhausted Azehina-san now leaned her head on my shoulder. What's going on? Azehina-san? No response. Uh, she's snoring. I leaned my head forward, then turned 85 degrees to the left, and saw Azehina-san with her eyes closed, her lips half opened as she made a quiet snore. What's going on here? The bushes behind me suddenly rustled. I felt my heart leap out of my mouth. What was that? Is she asleep? Coming out of the bushes was none other than Azahina-san? Looks like she's out cold. Good evening, kyon -kun. It was Azahina-san Deluxe Edition. A pretty young lady, though much older than the Azahina-san sleeping on my shoulder. This Azahina-san had grown fully in every part. While still looking cute, her charm had increased tenfold. I've met her once before, and like last time, she was wearing a white blouse and tight blue miniskirt. This Azahina-san now stepped in front of me. <laughs> View, she looks just like a child. She pinched the sleeping Azahina-san's cheek. Looking nostalgic, the adult Azahina-san caressed the sailor uniform of the sleeping Azahina-san. This is how I looked back then. Feeling the head of Azahina-san small on my shoulder, I couldn't move and sat still, looking in awe at Azahina-san big. It was her mission to bring you here, yet from here onwards it'll be my mission to guide you. Um, what exactly is the mission? I can't tell you that information because it's classified. All I can do is be your guide. I turned to look at the Azahina-san sleeping on my shoulder. I put her to sleep because I can't be seen by her. Why is that? Well, when I was her, I didn't see myself. Her reasoning was clear, yet confusing at the same time. The charming Azahina-san winked at me and said, Go south following the train track over there. You're gonna come to a public junior high school. And could you help the person standing outside the fence? Go right away, and I hope you don't mind carrying me along as well. I shouldn't be too heavy. She sounded like a villager in an RPG. I wonder what I'll get as a reward. A reward, huh? The adult Azahina-san elegantly placed her hand under her chin and thought deeply. Then she gave a mature smile. I have nothing to offer you, but you could kiss me while I'm sleeping. And make sure it's only when I'm asleep, okay? Now that's an attractive offer. That's exactly what I've been wishing for. The sight of Azahina-san sleeping soundly was so cute I was tempted to do it, but... Uh, well, that's a bit... Whether it was my mood or the situation then, I just didn't feel like it would be appropriate. Frankly, I was disgusted at myself for being so rational then. Time's running out, I've gotta go. Is that all the hints I get this time? Oh, and please don't let her know I was here. Here, let's make a pinky promise. I automatically lifted my little finger and hooked it with Azahina-san's. Please, just let me hold it for a little bit longer, okay? Until next time, kyun -kun. Azahina san Big cheerfully walked off into the darkness. She was out of sight in no time. She sure knows how to make an exit. Now then, I wonder when I'll meet this adult Azahina san again. I had a feeling she hadn't changed much since last time we met. Maybe this Azahina san who appeared came from an earlier time plane than the last one. I don't get it. Then again, there's probably no way I could.